Hey guys, so you may be wondering why I have a really janky dollar store whiteboard with me and an expo whiteboard marker. Well, today I am going to show you my blind girl writing and drawing skills eight years into being basically totally blind. I have light and shadow perception, as you know if you watch my videos on a regular basis, but that's it. So I can't see what I'm actually writing or drawing on this board. Um, before I get into the actual writing and drawing of things, um, I want to kind of give you a bit of a background. So because I grew up with some sight, I was always legally blind, so I never had full sight uh, in the eyes of the law. I never had enough sight to drive a car or anything like that, but I had enough sight to you know, read and write. I read large print. Um, instead of writing with pencils, I learned how to write with black markers, uh, Sharpies. Uh, instead of writing on white paper, I would write on like buff colored paper or cream colored paper because it didn't hurt my eyes as much as white did. Uh, I would actually use a whiteboard in class instead of the chalkboard at the front of the room that all the other kids were reading off of. I would have like thick black lines on my cream paper instead of, I don't know, does, I don't know actually the color of lines on white paper, is it blue? I think it's blue. Anyways, regardless, let me know down below what color lines are on regular lined white paper because I have no clue because I've never written on it in my life. So um, yeah, that was kind of how I learned to write was with markers um, and buff paper. And then uh, I actually, obviously like when I lost more of my vision, stopped writing anything really but my signature. And that's what most people who are say blind from birth learn. They learn how to write uh, their name or just a symbol as a signature um, because obviously there's you know legal documents and things that you face in life that you have to be able to sign. So most blind people, actually I'm pretty positive that all blind people can write at least their name and a signature. Um, and we do have things called signing cards, which basically are like plastic credit cards that have a slot cut out of them. And then I can have a sighted person put that card over the line that I need to sign on so that I can write my name on the line and make sure that it's um, on, on the line. Yeah, so a lot of us keep those. I have one in my wallet. I have one on my desk at work. I have them everywhere so that whenever I need to sign a document on a dotted line, I can actually do so with the help of a sighted person uh, putting that there. So that's a really useful tool that I use for writing. And nowadays, I, the, pretty much the only things I ever write is, is my name and my signature. And I certainly don't do it well. It is like a three-year-old's writing, which you will see later. And I can't write small. Like, I cannot. It's like my version of small writing that I would have to do when I'm trying to like write on a check or something like that, and it has to be small is much bigger than the print you would use because when I was sighted, uh, I always wrote large print because I could only read large print. So I, I never learned how to write very small and I was also never taught cursive writing in school because the letters were too swirly for my eyes to follow, especially because my eyes always shake due to my nystagmus. Um, I could never see, like my eyes could never follow the lines of curly, swirly writing. Um, so that said, I do like my own version of cursive writing uh, when I write my name because I have to try my best when I'm writing my name to not pick my pen or marker off the paper, otherwise I lose my spot. So I always try to keep the marker on, on the page, um, but it, it certainly doesn't look anything like cursive that a sighted person would learn in school would look like. Um, and then in grade 11, I actually had a situation where in one of my classes, my leadership class, yes, that's actually a class that I took, we had to draw signs and my friends thought it would be funny to have me draw the sign. And it was a lemonade stand sign. And because I hadn't written regular print letters in so long, I wrote the word lemonade, but like some of the letters in the word were capitalized, some of the letters were lowercase, and one of the letters was just completely backwards. <laughs> Like I literally wrote the letter the opposite direction that it should be facing and they thought it was so hilarious that they hung it up in the hallway and in the corner it was like done by Molly the blind girl so it was pretty funny um, and my my kind of thing when I was younger whenever anybody because people used to make fun of my handwriting all the time since like I said it does look pretty much like a three-year-old's writing uh, I used to 
at a certain point, I just like stopped handwriting my friends' birthday cards and just started handing them Braille's birthday cards. I was like, there you go, up to you. You make fun of me for having bad writing, but you can't even read my writing now. So it was, yeah. So now I always just Braille people's birthday cards and if they really want to know what I've said to them, they can go and translate it on Google. So yeah, because you can actually, if you're interested, uh, there's websites that you can translate print to Braille. So you just uh, type in the print word and convert and it'll show you what the dot sequence in print uh, in Braille would be and vice versa. So it's, it's kind of cool. You can kind of decode Braille using an online image. Obviously us blind people can't because the dots aren't raised on the screen, but if you're interested in actually teaching yourself Braille, um, all sighted people learn Braille by visually reading Braille. Uh, I actually don't know any sighted person myself who knows Braille and actually reads it with their fingers like blind people because as a blind person, my fingers are way more sensitive than yours would be as a sighted person. So for me, uh, reading Braille is really easy and my mom knows, can attest to the fact that I will find a flaw in anything, any clothing item, any mug, like anything, I will find the my, most minute flaw with my fingers that you would never be able to see with your eyes because my fingers are just so sensitive. Um, so yeah, blind people, we read braille with our fingers, but sighted people read it with their eyes. So every braille teacher I've ever had has been sighted and they've always been sight readers. Um, my ex-boyfriend taught himself braille online using the Translate website. Um, and he would always braille me cards, but then he would only be able to read my cards back to him in, you know, using his eyes. So anyways, if you're interested in that, that's that. That's kind of this, the history of my writing. Uh, I never was good at drawing, so we'll see how this goes. Back in the summer, I think it was maybe August, I posted a video telling you guys that I was going to be doing this and asking for requests in the comment section. So the other day I went through the comment section and I pulled a couple, there were some that were like very requested, so I tried to pull ones that were um, quite requested. And so, without further ado, let's get into my attempt at drawing and writing eight years into blindness. All right, so the first one we're gonna do is a request from the username Lauren W, not sure the last name, it was just Lauren W. And she requested that I draw a cat. So, we'll see. Oh, I'm already dreading this decision. Okay, let's go. And it's also very hard to draw because I got such a bad whiteboard. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to use the technique of moving my pen off the paper or the whiteboard the least amount possible. So. I don't know if I should do a body. I'm gonna try. I'm using this technique that I learned how to draw dogs when I was little. Okay, okay, I'm done. I think I'm gonna say this is done. All right, are you guys ready? I don't know if you're ready for this. I don't know if I'm ready to expose this to the world. This is my cat. So, the theory that I went with was you know, there's the face. And I was just gonna stop at the face, but then I was like, maybe that's cheating. So then I tried to draw like the cat from the front angle. So you see his like kind of chest and his two front legs. And I was too scared to try to draw the little legs in between his front two, so I didn't. Uh, but I drew the tail coming up above his head. So that's what, it's not a third ear. <laughs> it's, it's his tail in the middle there uh, coming up from behind. So that is my attempt at cat and I'm going to name him Mr. Whiskers. All right, so I had somebody help me clear off the whiteboard for the next one. And the next request, I got a lot of requests for animals, uh, but the next one I selected was a bunny. I got a request for a giraffe, and I'm so sorry to the person who requested that, but I actually have zero, like zero knowledge of what giraffes look like other than the long neck. I obviously could see photos of them when I was younger, but at this point in my life, I've been blind for long enough that I have no memory at all of what giraffes look like. I think they're polka dotted and they have long necks, but that's all I remember. So for me to draw one, would I just, it would be a neck with some dots around it. Like that's it. Cause I just don't know what else they look like. So uh, I selected a bunny cause I actually have a lot of stuffed bunnies. Uh, so I remember what bunnies look like cause I have one that I sleep with every night cause I'm an adult and adults sleep with bunnies every night. 
So uh, I can't remember who requested Hannah this. Hannah B. This one was requested by Hannah B. Says mom, who's off screen. So thank you, Hannah B. There's a lot of lack of last names, just letters. So um, thank you, Hannah, for requesting a bunny, and I hope I do your bunny justice. Let's give it a go. I hope it doesn't look too similar to my cat. I'll try to make it look different than the cat. Oh, do bunnies have whiskers? Yeah. Oh shoot, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna go without whiskers because I don't remember if they have whiskers. Because my stuffed animal doesn't have whiskers, so I can't remember. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a body different this time. I'm gonna try to draw like a puffy little tail and some feetsies. And, oh, what should we name the bunny? We'll name him Peter, like Peter Rabbit. So, the big reveal. Here's Peter Rabbit. So I tried to, the face with the big floppy ears coming down, and then the body, like he's sideways. So he's supposed to be like looking over his shoulder. Um, so that was the, the concept that I went with for this masterpiece right here. So he's kind of standing sideways, looking over his shoulder, and his, his tail is um, on, on this side, and then his feet are, are on the bottom. So that's my little hop along Peter Rabbit. Okay, so I know you can't see my face right now. I wanted to change angles so you could actually see me writing or drawing in action. Uh, this one's actually going to be writing because I got so many requests to write my name and signature. And as I mentioned, um, I try not to pick my marker off when I'm writing my name, so you'll see, uh, you'll see me kind of try to follow through on each word. Let's give it a go! Molly. name and now I'll draw my signature. Um, I would just do like this. That's how I draw my signature usually. So there you go. There you have it. All right, just so you know, I actually don't really remember how to hold a pen or pencil properly. I can't remember if it's like this or this or that. I can't remember. So if you're looking at me and you're like, she's not holding her marker right, that's why. So I got a lot of little requests and I'm just going to kind of scatter them around the board. So I got a request to do the flag of the country I'm from and I'm from Canada. So, uh, how do I want to do this? Our flag's pretty simple to draw, except So there you go. There's the Canadian flag. Um, I also got requested to write Gallup's name. So. Oh, I'm trying to. A, okay. I had a moment of blanking on a. Gallup! And then I'll draw his picture up here. Oh. Okay, how do I want to do this? Maybe we'll do a, a side profile. I'm just going to do his face, I think. Or down to. There we go. That's Gallop. Uh, he has a really long nose, so I tried to draw a really long snout, and I tried to put an eye and a little ear, and that's like his side profile of his, of his face. So I hope you all enjoyed viewing my absolute masterpieces. I'll have my art on sale if you're uh, interested in purchasing any of my glorious uh, whiteboard artwork. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this a little bit entertaining. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.